Hey everyone, it's uh, Jim, Old Coot Camper, back for uh, video number two. And uh, before I talk a little bit about my Tab 400 uh, first couple camping experiences, um, got to apologize to all the folks that actually watched my first video. I have to confess that I actually didn't think that I had published that. I uploaded it to my new uh, YouTube channel, took a peek at it, and said, no one in the world is going to watch that video. And so I didn't think I made it public. I thought it was private. And it was only when I went back uh, a few days ago, because um, I was uploading a different video for my brother-in-law's, which I, is private, <laughs> that I realized that not only was it public, but people had actually watched it and commented on it. So for those of you who watched and commented and subscribed, I apologize for not being around or not responding to you. It wasn't because I... Uh, didn't want to respond it was because I actually didn't think I published the darn video so anyway I'll uh, you know now that I know that people are out there and they're actually interested in um, hearing what I have to say regarding my new experiences with the tab I'll try to be a little bit more uh, proactive in responding and, and maybe making a few more videos they are gonna be sporadic uh, I'm not here to do product reviews or, or anything of that nature this is really just documenting my own experiences uh, more for myself than anything else so anyway, before I talk a, a little bit about my uh, camping experience, I, I just want to talk a little bit about an experience I had with my, my dealer. And this is sort of a continuation of what happened in my first video where I mentioned that I had broke my um, uh, tongue jack. And my dealer tried to sell me a $250 electric tongue jack as opposed to the $0.47 cent compression pin. It actually took me to fix that. Um, <clears throat> And mind you, I had only owned my tab for three days at that point in time. Well, I've had a couple of other things with the tab go wrong. Nothing, nothing major. Um, there's a little, I guess I call it a trim bar underneath the tab. I don't even know what it does. It goes uh, widthwise uh, behind the wheels. And one of the, uh, there's some screws that uh, hold that in. One of the screws actually sheared off, so it's hanging down about an inch. I don't even know what that does. Um, I'll figure out a way to fix that. Um, the other thing that, that was a little bit more concerning is that, you know, there is uh, the colored, or in my case, the black plastic uh, trim that, that goes on the outside of the tab. There's also rubber that, that fits along that as well. And in both the left and the right side of my tab in the back, that rubber had buckled. Um, I'm not sure why. Uh, but anyway, I, uh, I called the, the dealer, and, and basically the response I got was, um, yeah, send us some pictures. You'll have to fill out a warranty claim. We'll see what we can do. You know, not like buying a car these days. You buy a car today and you call them up. Something goes wrong. They're pretty much Johnny on the spot. I, I own a Toyota. I own a BMW. And anything goes wrong with those things, they are right there to fix it. They'll help you on the phone, bring it in as soon as you can, make an appointment. Um, if you're waiting, they serve you coffee or lattes or donuts or whatever. In the case of uh, the BMW dealership, they take me to work and they pick me up. Um, that's not my experience with uh, RV dealers, unfortunately. It's uh, not as uh, not a good experience so far with that. But relative to the, uh, the trim, I did call New Camp and they said not a big deal. Just push it back in. Not exactly the response I was looking for. I, I was able to get up there and push one side back in. The other side didn't go in so easily. And so I ended up just putting a little glue on there. I think that'll be fine. So you might notice I'm not in my RV. I'm actually in my basement. Um, I am a fan of Miller products. I actually work for Miller Brewing Company. You'll see my prized possession behind me. That is the Jake Leinenkugel autographed paddle. I actually need Jake. Uh, the, at the moment, I'm happily enjoying a Coors Banquet uh, product, and, which I love as well. So anyway, about my camping experiences. Uh, I live in Wisconsin, and, and while we don't have the grand vistas and, and the mountains and the canyons and, and things of that nature that you get uh, out west, um, we do have a really nice state park system, uh, very amenable to campers, and they're everywhere, and so there were a couple of camping areas not too far from my house. One's actually 15 minutes away, the other is an hour away, and I, and I tried those out for a couple of weekends with my Tab 400. I have to say things, the Tab performed marvelously if you can say it performed um the only issue i have is backing that damn thing in 
Um, first time, I, I think I backed in and out 20 times. Almost got stuck in the mud. I'll show you a picture of that if I can. Uh, because it was kind of wet on one side. And uh, I don't think the picture, if I show it, will, will do it justice. Um, but those that rut on the right side is probably six inches deep. I thought I was going to get stuck, but I did learn that those tires work really well. Those boondocking tires got me right out of that mud. I am sure that everybody in the campground was laughing there. You know what off. Um, I actually had to stop, go around the circle because all the roads are one way and, and try again before I got frustrated. And ultimately I got in. Uh, I almost did hit the electric box. Luckily I stopped. You know, I noticed when you're backing in by yourself, you always lose sight of one side of the camper. So if the camper is going, you know, you're moving that to the right, you can look in your rear view mirror, you can look behind you, you can see the whole right side, but you lose you just lose the left side and if you're turning it to the left you lose uh, while you're doing it by yourself you lose the right side I'm actually thinking about getting one of those um, wireless backup cams if anybody has one let me know what you think um, I'm thinking that that would be really helpful because I had to e even if I wasn't a lousy uh, person to back things up which which I am um, you know, I'd still have to get out quite a bit just to, to check around if I'm camping by myself. So that was a learning experience. But ultimately, I got in. Um, and, and things went great. Every You know, the uh, the only thing I would say about the uh, that I noticed that was a little bit annoying with the tab is that on a couple occasions, I had to cook inside because it was raining. Now, I did have windows open and things of that nature. But, you know, that splash guard thing comes up, and it, it essentially keeps the smoke, any steam or anything, any cooking uh, heat um, actually keeps it in 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 the tab even if you've got the window open so I did turn on the fantastic fan I tried it once by blowing air in thinking that the air from the outside would come in and then blow that smoke out the window and the other time um, I tried sucking the smoke out and while it did kind of blow it out the window and it did suck it out both times the smoke alarm ended up going up, even though there, there was no fire, there was no danger, there was nothing going on, and both times I ended up actually taking the battery out of the smoke alarm. I don't know if there's a solution for that other than to remove the battery. Um, because again, the, it wasn't like the the uh, RV was filled with smoke or anything of that nature. It was just um, really just an annoyance. The other thing I found out, and, and, and New Camp actually put out a video on this just the other day, and that is I noticed I... I wasn't getting very much hot water. Um, like I'd turn the hot water on, it would shoot out for 10 seconds and then it would just go away. Well, what I realized and, and what New Camp said is they set the, uh, the hot water mixing valve at the lowest possible setting um, to prevent anybody from scalding themselves essentially. So for those of you who have not done this yet, you need to go into your, uh, your settings on your, uh, your mixing valve and you just need to turn it a little bit, quarter of a turn at the time they say, until you get the temperature for the duration uh, and temperature that you want. So I, I'm going to do that. Other than that, I, I couldn't be happier with, with my choice. Um, in the next video, I might talk to you a little bit about towing and, and some of the challenges I've had there, but that's not necessarily a tab issue. That's more my issue. Um, Oh, but maybe a little bit of a tab issue because the tongue on that darn thing is really heavy. But anyway, the, the Aldi heat system worked terrifically. It got down into the lower 40s both nights I was camping, or both times I was camping, and um, set that thing at 65, and man, it was it was right on the, the uh, right on the dot. Um, I did put a three-inch foam topper on the cushions for the bed, and and let me tell you, that thing sleeps is it's just terrific. It's as comfortable as my bed at home, uh, which was, was surprising to me. So I slept like a baby. The temperature was great. And the very best thing, for those of you who are tent campers, um, you know that the worst thing about tent camping, especially when you sit around the fire and you drink this all night, and you get in your tent, and you're nice and warm, and all of a sudden, what do you got to do? You got to go to the bathroom. It is horrible. You got to get out of your sleeping bag. You got to make a decision. Do I put my shoes on? Do I walk in the wet grass? Do I walk in the mud? Do I get bit by something if I'm walking outside? Da 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 da. da. Well, there is. I'm telling you, it's almost joyful getting up in the middle of the night, paddling over to the bathroom, and going to the bathroom in your heated camper. I mean, what could be better than that? <laughs> anyway, so uh, again, my apologies to those folks who uh, were waiting for this video. My also apologies that this isn't really very interesting, that I don't have a lot of video. I will do a better job 
uh, of videos in the future. I don't have any fancy equipment. I got an iPhone, basically. Um, one thing I do have that's that's relatively new, my daughter has lent me her DSLR camera. And uh, I've never taken pictures on anything other than old Kodak Instamatic. Do you, get, do you remember that? Those I'm sure there are, there are old coots out there that, that remember the Instamatic or the Instant Camera. Picture pops out, develops right in front of your eyes. Uh, that or an iPhone, that's basically what I use. Uh, and so um, I'm trying to teach myself how to be a photographer. So with that, I will end with a couple of uh, pictures that I've taken, my first uh, DSLR pictures while I was hiking, while I was camping. And uh, you can let me know uh, what you think about those. And so if you have any ideas on what you want me to, want me to do, again, I'm not here to do product reviews. Um, but I will talk about my experiences with the, with the tab or, or just camping in general. And, uh, you know, I, you know, cooking is one of the best things to do when you're, you're camping. So if anybody's interested in what I make, um, although I don't know how often I'm going to be camping, I'm a weekend warrior. I'm not full time. Anyway, just let me know what you want. Let me know what you think. You know, if you say this sucks, that's fine. I don't care. Um, anyway, until we talk next time, uh, wish you all well and, uh, take care.